Another thing Netflix says repeatedly, which we've also said repeatedly in this course, is to not focus on accurately predicting rating values. This is a little bit ironic, given that the focus on rating predictions was really driven by the Netflix prize itself. Today, however, Netflix has done away with star ratings entirely, so they couldn't train on them even if they wanted to. They talk about how they have evolved by initially focusing on rating prediction to focusing on rankings instead, and finally to whole page optimization. Although they don't call it out specifically, YouTube isn't trying to predict ratings either. They are optimizing on minutes watched, and their objective function is learned over time from live A-B tests, not on any offline accuracy metric. Netflix also relies on live A-B tests online to tune its systems. They use what they call an offline-online testing procedure to use offline metrics to get an initial cut at which new ideas might perform well online, and then use live online A-B tests to validate those ideas on real people. That's basically the approach we've promoted throughout this course. Netflix also notes that ratings data is inherently noisy, which limits the usefulness of RMSE as a metric for your recommender system. Remember, YouTube abandoned the use of explicit ratings entirely, so it seems they both reached the same conclusion here. Also similar to YouTube, Netflix has separated out the problems of candidate generation with ranking them, and has invested a lot in their own personalized learning to rank approach. Learning to rank basically treats the problem of generating a top end list as a classification problem, with each slot in the top end is a classification you are trying to learn. Although they are cagey on the details of how they do this, again, they name drop a few examples of how you might do it, including rank SVM, rank boost, rank net, and BPR. They don't just use the results of their personalized learning to rank the system as is, though. They intentionally factor in the popularity of the results as well at the end to try and balance predicted rankings with popularity. As we've mentioned, showing some popular items is essential to producing user trust in the system and getting them to engage with it. As with YouTube, recommendation candidates come along with scores or rating predictions that you could just sort to get a top end list, but they've taken this a step further and applied machine learning to finding the best order to present those final results in, incorporating more information than just those predicted ratings. Netflix, like YouTube, has found that the more features you train your system with, the better. It's not just about which videos you watched in the past, it's also about how you watched them. And the circumstances you're in right now might affect what sorts of content are best to show you right now. For example, are you likely to view different kinds of content depending on which device you're viewing it on? If you're accessing Netflix from your big screen TV, perhaps that's the device you use personally, and recommending longer forum content aimed at adults is what makes sense. If your kid uses your Netflix account on a tablet, making recommendations based on what you've watched from that tablet would surface shorter kid-focused content that makes sense in that context. The time might make a difference as well. You might be open to more mature content late at night than you would in the afternoon when the kids are around. Even the day of the week might matter. You may be looking to kill more time on the weekends, and so you might prefer movies on weekends and TV shows during the week. These are all examples of the context in which you are seeking recommendations, and a good recommender system will use all of this information to refine the results it returns. Those are the main points Netflix has shared with us, but they are insightful. It's also interesting that even though Netflix and YouTube are both in the business of recommending videos, they are doing so in slightly different settings and with slightly different requirements that have informed their choices of algorithms and technology.